Hi everybody, in this video, this is the second video, by the way, for uh, Unit 3.1 on sequential logic. In the last video, I tried to introduce what the term sequential logic went and how our circuits were going to differ from the combinational logic circuits that we built previously in this class. In this video, this is the second video of the series, and I think it's probably going to be a three video series here. I'm going to try to introduce to you what a D flip-flop is and how it works. Okay, now we're not going to get to all of the intricacies, and to be perfectly honest, you're not going to understand these things until you just go in and start building with them. And then at some point in time, um, you know, it'll just click for you and you'll be fine. Okay, but this is just a quick introduction to how they work. Okay, so what is a D flip flop? First of all, you're going to want to pause and you're going to want to copy down this PowerPoint into your engineering notebook. So take a second and copy this, and when you get done, unpause the video. Okay, now, now that you have this down, Let's talk about what you're looking at here. This is a very basic block format of a D flip-flop, okay? We'll, we'll add more and more inputs as we go on. On the left-hand side, we have D and clock inputs, okay? The left side are inputs. The right side are outputs, and we only have two outputs. They are Q and Q0, okay? It's very simple. Let's start with the Q, the Q and Q0. It's very simple to understand what they're doing. First of all, if Q is on, then Q0 is off, and as Q is on, let's see, I said that backwards, didn't I? If Q is on, Q0 is off. If Q is off, Q0 is on. They're always opposites of each other. We can use Q or Q0 depending on what we want to actually accomplish with the particular circuit that we've built, but to understand that they're always opposites of each other. So inside of this little block, inside this little chip somewhere, there's like a NOT gate that spurs off of here, it runs through a NOT gate, and then it just passes a signal out. So it's always the opposite. On the left side, we have the inputs. Let's talk about D first. First of all, with the D flip-flop, D is the input. Basically, what's happening is this. Whatever D is, it's going to pass that signal through to Q. So understand over here. Now, notice this is not a truth table. It's an excitation table, but in essence, it's the same thing. Okay. What we have is if D is a 0, then it passes the 0 over to Q. And if D is a 1, it passes the 1 over to Q. So whatever D is, Q will be. Well, that sure sounds like a switch. I mean, why not just throw a switch, and if the switch is on, we have a 1, and if the switch is off, we have a 0. See, what we were forgetting, though, is with sequential logic, we have an external clock that drives everything. So what we're saying is this. The clock determines when that signal will be passed through. And what we have here is a little symbol. It's got a triangle. The triangle means it's edge triggered. That would be E, D, G, E, triggered, edge triggered. And so we have rising and falling edges of the clock. We'll get to that in just a second. And in this particular case, the way the diagram is set up, we know that it's a rising edge triggered flip-flop. So what that means is this, okay? The clock is going to send in a signal. Oh my gosh, look at all that animation, okay? Let's go with this. Ready? The clock is going to send in a signal. It's going to just alternate up and down, up and down, up and down between 0 and 1. So we have multiple edges. And what you can see here is right now we have a 0, and right here we have a 1. The second that it passes, the instant in time that it passes from that 0 to the 1, the signal is going upward, and we call that a rising edge. You'll see that it occurs right here. Why do they put all these arrows in at once? Look at the arrows and where they go, okay? Positive edge transitions, rising edges, happen whenever the signal goes from zero to one, no matter how quickly it happens, right here, right here, right here, and right here, okay? Likewise, we have what's called a falling edge, a negative edge, okay? And the negative edge would be whenever the one goes from the one back down to zero. It happens here, and it happens here, it happens here, and it happens here, four different locations on this particular diagram. Let's see if you can keep up with all these arrows that are getting ready to appear. There you go, okay? So we have all of these different edges, and what that means is this. Let's go back, and let's look at multi-sim, okay? So I have a little circuit built for you. This is a simple D flip-flop, and this looks terrible, guys, but there's a lot of wires here that you don't need to pay attention to. This D flip-flop is set up so that we can see the purple input goes to D, Okay, so there's a manual switch. I'm going to run D on my own. I'm also going to run the external clock on my own. So I'm going to manually decide when this thing goes from 0 to 1. That's the clock from the previous slide. On the output side, we have Q and we have Q0. 
okay? So what we're going to do here is this. Notice that right now, if I click, uh, let's see, I gotta shut this one down first, sorry. Here we go, okay? What I'm going to do is this. If I have D and it turns to a one, that signal has not passed through yet. The reason it hasn't passed through is because it's waiting for the external clock to go from zero to one. Right now it's sitting at five volts, it's sitting at one. If I drop it down, there's a falling edge, nothing happens. But watch what happens when I click and bring it back up to a one. Nothing, what in the world? Reset, clear, everything, oh geez, you gotta press the play button, guys. Hey, how about that? Okay, let's try this again, ready? So. I have a zero now coming in. That means that this should turn off and this should turn on, okay? The, the zero should pass through to Q, but when it does it is dependent on the external clock. One to zero, falling edge, nothing. The zero to one, it passes through. Same thing happens here. I flip this back up to a one, nothing's happening until I go from zero back up to one like I do here, okay? That's the external clock feature. And we can go through and we can manually clock it on our own if we want to decide when to switch from one thing to the other. Or later on, we'll also learn how to build in voltage clocks, okay? This is called clock underscore voltage, that component is. And what I can do is I can set up, stop this one, run this one. I have this one set up to run once every four seconds it changes signals. So if I flip down to one from zero, excuse me, whenever the clock hits, that's when it determines when it's going to change signal and match D. So that's an introduction to D flip-flops. Now a couple of other pieces of information that you'll want to know, okay? We have what are called timing tables and you're gonna be expected to read these things. And so the idea goes like this. With the D flip-flop, we are looking at just a couple of things. First of all, they're going to tell us what Q is. Or actually, what's going to happen is you're going to be given D, and you're going to be given the clock, the two inputs, and you're going to be expected to draw what the signal for the Q is going to look like. When is it going to be low, and when is it going to be high? It's really simple to do this. The first thing you have to do is this. It's a positive edge triggered flip-flop. So I'm going to go to each of the positive edges and I'm going to draw a simple line up. So I've drawn a dotted line up, dotted line up, dotted line up at each of these edges. The next thing that I do is at each of those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven locations, those are the only times that my cue can change signal. So I go through and I look at what D is at each of those locations. Right here, D is high. So Q is going to go and be turn, become high. Here D is low, Q is going to match. D is low, Q is going to match. And I'm gonna put a series of dots in. High, high, low, 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 low. I'm gonna put a series of dots in, and then I'm just gonna connect them with the lines between whenever I'm all finished. So what they're trying to point out is the fact that, see like right here, D was high, it flipped down, and then it flipped back up before the clock could take another reading. That little blip with the switch is not registered by the flip-flop because the falling edge, the rising edge, didn't hit, okay? Same thing happens here. Look at this, we, fly, we take D and we drop it down, and look how long it takes before the clock hits. So that whole time that D is down, Q is still up. We call that hold time, hold time. It's gonna hold the signal in place, okay? Over here, we have a situation where Q doesn't even register the fact that D flipped on for a little while and then flipped back off before the clock hit again, okay? So Q can only change in correlation with the external clock and those rising edges. So that's a D flip-flop. That's a pretty good introduction to how they work and how the clock drives the timing of the mechanism. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? you'll need to watch one more video on the asynchronous preset and clear inputs before you're ready to do the homework.